Whether new shooter, longtime gun owner, or even police officer or soldier, your handgun needs a Crimson Trace laser sight or light. Get the confidence and reliability you need to protect family, home, and country. Crimson Trace. Broadcasting nationwide, this is Tom Gresham's Gun Talk. Your views, advice, and questions are the driving force of gun talk. Call Tom now at 866-TALK-GUN. That's one Tom Talk Gun. Or reach out to us via email at tom at guntalk.com. Let us know what you think about the gun-related issues of the day. Now, here's Tom Gresham. Lots of news, a lot of things going on. I'm so glad that you could be with us. Hey, I'm Tom Gresham, so I appreciate you being here. 866-TALK-GUN is our number here, 866-TALK-GUN. That certainly will get you in. A lot of different ways to uh, to communicate. You can shoot me an email, tom at guntalk.com. And, of course, we have Twitter running over there. Uh, at guntalk is my, I guess that's how you get a hold of me over on Twitter. Uh, and we have people over there right now. Actually, uh, people are saying, hey, I've seen the NRA new ad campaign. Excellent. They really like it. I don't blame them. I think it's excellent, too. I Honestly, there have been some times when I wasn't crazy about some of the things that Ackerman McQueen has done, their ad agency. This one, I think, is an absolute home run. And in just a second, we're going to have some news about the U.S. Customs and Border Patrol confiscating, picking up, preventing from coming into the country, saving you from switchblade combs. Yes, I said combs. I feel so much safer now. But first, we want to talk to uh, Michael. He's called in online, too. Hey, Michael, appreciate your patience. How are you? Hey, not too bad, Tom. I just wanted to let you know I was on your Twitter feed, and I saw a story about these old, old moms against guns were protesting at a Kroger store in Lansing, Michigan, and mm-hmm. subsequently asked to leave. Well, I live in Lansing, and I do follow the local news, and I never heard a word about any of this, so it kind of leads me to think that maybe these women aren't quite as popular as they'd like us to believe. I think they probably don't have near the local or even national play that they would like to claim they do, and yet we have to pay att- we have to pay attention to it because the, the whole idea, and that's why they're doing this thing with Target, with with um, Starbucks, now with Kroger, and they're losing their minds because Kroger won't uh, give in to their extortion. Which is, I mean, it's come on, it, that's what it is. It's if you don't do this, then we're going to boycott you. We're going to protest you. But more than that, and people need to understand this, the, the Moms Demand Action, what they're telling people is, go fill up a basket full of perishable foods at Kroger. And then when you get up to the checkout counter, say, oh my gosh, this is that place that allows people to have guns. I'm afraid to be here and then leave a basket full of perishable foods there and walk out. That's a well, real belt way to handle things. Yeah, really, really. Uh, let me ask you, you're, you mentioned you saw this on the Twitter feed. I've tried to explain to people, uh, it, it becomes a bit of a, a news feed, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. I just log on usually once a day, and you're, you, it's always a lot of real interesting stuff that, frankly, I'm not going to see anywhere else. I, just, I don't have time to dig through all these websites. Yeah, well, that's that's what I do. I dig through all the websites, and frankly, I get some help from some of our listeners, and I really appreciate that. People say, "Hey, have you heard about this story?" I go, "Oh no, I have cool. We're gonna shoot that out on the the Twitter feed." So there you go. Well, listen, I appreciate the uh, the call. Oh, by the way, um, one thing you may want to do is I did this. Join the Moms Demand Action Group, and then you'll get on their email list, and you'll find out what they're doing locally, and you can go. And you can join them for their meetings and their protests and their actions. And what you do there is your own business. But, I mean, obviously we're going to be uh, respectful. But at the same time, I think showing up is a good idea. So, anyway, it's a possibility for you there. I I appreciate that. Let me, at this point, uh, turn to our good friend Doug Ritter from Knife Rights. Doug sent us this most interesting story. Hey, Doug, how are you? Hey, Tom. I'm doing great. So now we are safe from uh, self-opening combs? Switch combs, yes. We are all safe. The government is saving us from the horrors of switch combs. Yes. What in the world is going on here? What is this story? 
Well, it seems that um, Customs and Border Protection down in Baltimore uh, went through a container and found a bunch of uh, what they called switchblade knives um, and uh, uh, switch combs, which really were butterfly combs, uh, which which are in, indeed based on a butterfly knife, but they don't have a blade, they have a comb. And, What's even more fascinating is if if you look at the the photo that they published when they issued this press release, mm-hmm. the uh, the the ballet songs that they showed are trainers. You know, I don't know where they come from, but where I come from, if there's not an edge on it, it's not a knife. Yes. Yeah, so to, to explain, a trainer is a knife that does not have a sharp edge on it, and it's what you use when you're learning to use it in the case of a ballet song or a butterfly knife, you it flips out, and you really want to use a trainer because if you don't, you could end up like using up your whole supply of band aids. That, that's exactly right. I, it's it's amazing to me that they can look at a a dull piece of flat steel, um, let alone a comb, and and decide that that's illegal. I mean, let's face it; it's called the Switch Blade Act. Knife Act, not not the switch piece of metal <laughs> act. Right. It's not so that, a knife without an edge. How how can they possibly do this? But you know they do. All right. Knife Rights is the national organization for knife rights. It's the uh, if you will the Second Amendment group for knife owners. You have actually had dealings with Customs Border Patrol guys before with this. This is not your first go around. Oh, no. Oh, no. Back in 2009, in fact, our first major foray uh, legislatively was when U.S. Customs and Border Patrol tried to effectively say that any one-hand opening knife was a switchblade, um, which have, would have redefined switchblades uh, throughout this country. And mm-hmm. uh, we were successful uh, with the help from our Second Amendment friends in adding a fifth exemption to the Federal Switchblade Act that, that clearly exempted one-hand opening and assisted opening knives um, from the Federal Switchblade Act. Um, you know, Customs Border Patrol sort of makes things up as they go along, we've discovered, and every mm-hmm. once in a while we have to go uh, remind them that they don't get to do that. Hmm, okay. So this particular case, I mean, I don't know what happens with this. The people who are trying to bring in these uh, non-knives now have their goods confiscated. They paid for them, but they don't get to get them, actually receive them. So I guess they have to go through whatever legal hurdles, or, or maybe they don't get them at all. One of the problems is, and I, maybe you could address this, as you say, Customs kind, kind of makes up their own rules, and they to a very large extent, can do anything they want to. Almost no one can stop them. Well, part of the problem is that it costs so much. I mean, the total value of, of these goods is like $26,000, which sounds mm-hmm. like a lot of money until you start paying lawyer's fees. Ah. And $26,000 doesn't get you book us. So mm. effectively what Customs and Border Patrol does is extort the importer, um, the importer looks at, okay, do I lose, do, do I lose twenty six thousand dollars worth of stuff, mm-hmm. or do I spend one hundred and fifty or two hundred thousand dollars fighting these guys to get twenty six thousand uh, back? Yeah, right. Yeah, the the, the there's it, the numbers just don't add up, and this is often the case uh, when the federal government goes against folks. I mean, that's one of the reasons, for example, we're, we're so active in opposing this ban on the, the sale and trade in ivory, because they're going to be going after individual citizens who happen to own something with ivory, in our case, an ivory-handled knife, but it could be a firearm with ivory grips or ivory mm-hmm. inlay or pool cue or piano, and nobody can afford to fight the federal government unless you've got a huge organization and a huge purse. I mean, going uh, I... to federal court is... is quarter million to half a million dollars every time you go. You just can't do it. And so basically what you do is you just give up and let them take what they want because uh, to do anything less or anything else doesn't make any sense. Let me ask you, that. that's also, I'm going to take that and pick it up and drop it into New York. That's part of what Cyrus Vance, the DA in Manhattan, had been doing is basically, I call it shaking down 
stores and saying, look, you're selling knives that we say are illegal. They're not actually, but we say they are. And here's the deal. We're going to prosecute you for this unless you make a voluntary donation to our slush fund. To the tune of almost $2 million, which is why we've taken them to court. I mean, they have arrested thousands. I mean, the retailers are one thing, okay? That's their Mm -hmm. slush fund money. But they are arresting thousands of individual citizens on the streets of New York that are doing nothing but carrying a pocket knife, um, which is ridiculous. And that's why we are suing them in federal court, which, as I know, costs a lot of money. And and you've been through like two or three versions or steps along the way. The most recent one was, I guess, the DA's response, which was one of those non-response responses. Yes, the DA is great at, at, at wasting our money. I mean, he doesn't care about wasting his money because it's the taxpayers' dollars. Yeah, right. So he, he, he feels no obligation to be reasonable about that. So they, they just come up with these ridiculous um, briefs that have no basis in fact, and then we have to go in and point that out to the judges. Um, you know, we'll be before a, a three-judge uh, appeals court here, hopefully in the next couple months, and hopefully they'll look at this and they'll look at the law, and go, clearly the law is in our favor, and tell the DA and, and the circuit court judge to go pound sand and take this case to trial. <laughs> Tell you what, Doug, we're going to pick this up in about a week, and we're both going to be at uh, Gun Rights Policy Conference because I know there's more here, and people need to hear what's going on. But it's the the thing that's important to understand is that if it happens in New York and you let it go, that it just bleeds out across the rest of the country, and people can and will be arrested for simply carrying a pocket knife, right? It's it's a cancer. You've got to cut the cancer out at the source, and that's that, why we're in New York City. That, that's that's the deal. It cost a ton of money. We'll be talking about that again uh, next week in Chicago. Doug's going to be there with for the Gun Rights Policy Conference. Thank you, my friend. Say my best to your lovely wife, and we'll talk with you later. 866-TALK-GUN. We'll get you in here. Now we're open lines. Your range reports. What do you think about buying? What did you buy that you hated? You thought, boy, I'll never do that again. <laughs> oh, man, I got a four-barrel twenty-two pistol with a rotating, fiery... Oh, what a stupid thing that thing is. 866-TALK-GUN. Are you looking for a place to shoot? The National Shooting Sports Foundation has a great website called wheretoshoot.org. It's the largest database of shooting ranges on the Internet. It's also a great resource for shooters where you can find video tips, printable targets, and a lot more. Find it online at wheretoshoot.org. And while you're there, download their free iPhone app. That's wheretoshoot.org. The Ruger LC380 is the perfect pairing of the award-winning LC9 pistol and the popular 380 auto cartridge. The LC380 is the same size as the LC9, yet offers reduced recoil, making it Ruger's lightest recoiling personal protection pistol yet. It features a dovetailed high-visibility three-dot sight system, seven-round magazine and finger grip extension floor plate, manual safety, and loaded chamber indicator. The Ruger LC380, another rugged, reliable firearm from Ruger. Weather can affect your shot. Extreme cold, extreme hot, no matter what, Australian Outback Ammo has you covered. Ammunition loaded to shoot the same spot every time. And now Australian Outback offers 300 blackout with loads from a 125 grain bullet to a 220 grain subsonic load. Check it out at outbackammo.com.au. Outbackammo.com.au. The 45 Auto, also known as the 1911, is the standard other defensive pistols are measured against. No matter what pistol you carry, techniques developed around the 1911 are vital. You know you need training. And you know your concealed carry class definitely was not training. Now Gun Talk presents an exciting DVD, Fighting with the 1911 with Tiger McKee. Tiger's unique training style will have you drawing, moving, shooting, and running your gun better, no matter what style pistol you prefer. At ShopGunTalk.com, you can order our DVDs of Tiger's instruction. 
ShotgunTalk.com also has a two DVD set, including Concealed Carry One. Get both for the information you know you need. This really is life and death. ShopGunTalk.com has DVDs, books, and other essential gear. ShopGunTalk.com. That's ShopGunTalk.com. Springfield Armory presents the Gear Up promotion. Until October 31st, customers who purchase any new Springfield Armory pistol can sign up to receive three additional magazines and a free double bag pouch by visiting gearup.springfield-armory.com. That's a value of up to 135 bucks. XDs, XDMs, the XDS, and all 1911s. To learn about all the Springfield Armory firearms, go to springfield-armory.com. radio consultant once said he'd be off the air in a year. Whoops! Defending your Second Amendment rights since 1995 on over 150 radio stations nationwide. You're listening to Gun Talk with Tom Gresham. All right, back with you. 866-TALK-GUN. We'll get you in here. Let's just go straight to the phones. Robert's on line three in North Dakota. Robert, what's on your mind here? How you doing, Tom? Yeah, it's just great up here in North Dakota, man. Uh, youth season's in full swing, and I've seen a lot of youngsters out with their dads, and it's just a good feeling. And I have a comment about the Marine situation. I have a birthday question. The comment is I think that uh, our illustrious abandoner-in-chief uh, is just trying to figure out how he can use this Marine as a pawn, you know, how many uh, high top-level drug drug uh, lords we could probably trade for him or something, but uh, mm. that's my take on that. But my birthday question is, uh, next month's my birthday, and I'm thinking about either another hunting rifle or a 1911-style pistol or a, a Trichicon optic for my Bushmaster M4. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of going to go between either the Trichicon optic for the Bushmaster or uh, the hunting rifle, uh, and I'm kind of... My question is about the Savage Arms. What, what model was that that everybody's talking about so good right out of the box? And I think I'd like to go with the two seventy caliber. Well, if you're trying to decide between the two guns and the optic, my answer, of course, is going to be yes. <laughs> all of the above. <laughs> you just you put them all on a, a timeline. Say, okay, I'm going to do this one, and then I'm going to do this one, and the next one I'm going to do this one. Um... The Savage, I'm not sure which model people are talking Frankly, all of the Savages are really accurate, and they have the trigger that's excellent. They're doing a great job. Savage, frankly, reset. They recalibrated the bolt gun market several years ago. And now Ruger has its uh, Ruger American line out. Mossberg, you just heard, is coming out with uh, its new line. Uh, we're talking about rifles in the... Three hundred to five hundred dollar range that shoot like thousand or two thousand dollar rifles. Um, I swear, I don't think you can go wrong. Now, let me ask you: Why two seven? What, what's adjusted, what's they a, hmm? why two seven? Do they, they have an adjustable trigger on there? And I'm sorry, I talked over you. What was your question? That, that's okay. Uh, yes, they do have an adjustable trigger. It's a really good trigger. But my question is: Why a two seventy? Well, I was in the military. I'm an ex-paratrooper with the 82nd Airborne, and I have a staff sergeant friend of mine. Uh, I was in field artillery, and he was in the infantry. And he commented on the fact that a lot of them uh, use the 270 as an anti-sniper rifle uh, because it just shoots real good and real straight. Uh, so, of course, you know, I'm going to use it for hunting up here in North Dakota, but uh, that's kind of why I was just wondering about the 270. I have a 30 six and a 243. They shoot real well. Okay, what you're going to find is the 270 is going to be very similar to your Aught 6. You're going to have a little bit less recoil, just a little bit, and it's going to shoot a little bit flatter, just a little bit. Uh, but I think the 270 is a wonderful cartridge, and it used to be a little bit more popular than it is now. And I think a lot of people could benefit from going to a 270, especially if they're shooting magnums. But nothing in the world wrong with that. Of course, I mean, your, your Aught 6 is awfully darn good, too. Yeah, it shoots real good, and it really packs a good punch. And I reload uh, my own ammunition, and just so happens when I bought a reloading, uh, a bunch of reloading stuff uh, from, a, from a gentleman, got a table and the, the, a bunch of dies, and 
and the whole nine yards. And it just so mm. happened that I had a, a 270 die that came along with the set. So that's kind of another reason why I was going to go with the 270. <laughs> You're as bad as I am. Well, look, I've got a set of dies for a 270. Therefore, I must go buy a rifle. That I love that logic. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Well, we're, you know, we do have this sickness, but we're okay with that, right? Yes, sir. And about this time of year, I also come down with a fever. You know, I kind of get that uh, buck fever, so uh, I probably have yeah. to call in sick in a couple of days. So, <laughs> well, I'm not going to tell you which one of these to get. You're going to work it out because you know what's going to happen. You're going to eventually get them all anyway. So it, that's a good thing. That's probably what's going to happen. I, I, I do believe so, but I just got to. Just got to clear it with the, with the sergeant major here with my wife. So <laughs> I understand. Well, Robert, look, thank you for your service, and thank you for your call, my friend. You take care, and good luck with the hunt. All right, Gary's on line two out of Oregon. Hey, Gary, you got a range report for me? Yeah, Tom, hi. Uh, hey, last year I saw a, uh, a report in the American Rifleman. They were evaluating a, a 9 millimeter pistol, and it was a great evaluation. So I went out and bought one. It's called the TriStar C100. And okay. uh, it's made made in Turkey, you know, and it's it's a clone of the CZ seventy five, which is a pistol that's been around since the seventies. Right. It's basically an, an, it's an exact clone, okay. and uh, the workmanship is just fantastic. This thing costs you can get them. I saw one on Gunbroker this morning for three hundred twenty five bucks, new in the box. Wow! Uh, you see them any, anywhere from three fifty to three seventy nine. But uh, how's it, I how's it to shoot? Range. Yeah, how's it shoot? I, yeah, I've got a fifteen hundred dollar uh, nineteen eleven uh, nine millimeter, and I took them both to the range. And I'm almost ashamed to say that I shot better with this cheapo uh. <laughs> that I could I could buy four of them for what I paid for my nineteen eleven. It's, it's it's unbelievable, uh, isn't it? I mean, the, the kind of quality we're getting in guns, and, and yeah, the Turkish guns, a lot of them are really well made. Of course, the the CC seventy five is a great design, been around for a long time. And look, I apologize for having to go to the commercial, but hey, that's going to happen whether or not I'm talking. So when I get to the end of it, they're going to cut me off. So anyway. <laughs> 866-TALK-GUN. Got more range reports for us? Give us a holler. 866-TALK-GUN. This is Gun Talk. Broadcasting nationwide on radio, via satellite, and through downloads, iTunes, the Gun Talk app, and other podcast clients. You're listening to Gun Talk with Tom Gresham. So what do you think about buying? Uh, Hunting seasons are, well, either about to arrive or already here, depending on where you live. A lot of people looking for new guns there. I think I may have mentioned in passing earlier in the show, I went ahead and put in an order for the new Ruger American rifle. I, I shoot from the left shoulder, left eye dominant, right-handed, uh, and they brought out the Ruger American in left-handed, announced it last week, and I'd shot it in right-handed and liked it a lot, but frankly, I wasn't going to buy a right-handed one. I mean, I could, I can, I can run one of those, but I wanted a left-handed one, so they brought it out, and then I had to decide, okay, what caliber, because I, I want to do some deer hunting and have it available for hogs this year. And I went ahead and got a 7mm08, which I think is right in the sweet spot. I think the non-Magnum 7s are a great place to be. That would be the 7mm Mauser, or also known as the 7 57 Mauser, also known as the 275 Rigby, the 7mm08, the 280 Remington, uh, the 284 Winchester, if you can find one of those, they're all roughly the same ballistically, and we have such great bullets now. I mean, used to be you'd say, well, if you want to shoot an elk or something, you'd use 160, maybe even 175 grain bullet in them. But now you could use a controlled expansion 140 grain bullet and do anything you want to do with it. And of course, if you want to shoot long range, they've got some really great VLD bullets out there, very, very low drag bullets. So... Anyway, that's what I've done. I put in the order. With any luck, it'll be in next week. 
And then I got to get it topped off with a scope, probably go with a low power or variable, a one to four, one and a half to five ballpark, something like that. As soon as I get it shooting, I'll give you my own raise report when I have that ready. But right now, Marlon's on line one, and Marlon's got a uh, range report for us. Hey, Marlon. Hey, are you, Tom. Anyhow, yeah, so what, are you I, looking for, what, what are you looking for? Well, uh, well, the name of that Savage that they they wanted was Access. Uh, that's that new one. Oh, okay. But uh, but I, on that uh, Mossberg thing, he mentioned a lot of calibers, but not the one I'm interested in, it's 223. Oh, I would I would almost guarantee you that they will chamber this new rifle in two two three as as much interest as there is in that caliber. You got to know they're going to chamber it for that. Well, he mentioned two twenty two two fifty, and then he went up on that. But so I, I don't know. I'm hoping it comes in at you know two twenty three also. Well, now you know that they've got the other one. Was it the MVP uh, in two two three a bolt action rifle, and it'll take AR fifteen magazines. Yeah, but this new one sounds like it's. Uh, a little bit uh, better price and more features. So, yeah, I, I, but we'll see. But I would be surprised if they don't have it in two two three because I mean that's got to be like one of the top three rifle calibers out there now. So, uh, but I tell you what, when I get a chance, when I next talk to the folks at Mossberg, I'll ask and put in uh, your vote for the two two three. How's that? Yeah, well, it's economical to shoot, and you know, and it's it's fun to shoot too. So. Absolutely. I agree. Thanks, Mark. I appreciate the call. Line four, Vern's with us out of Washington State. Vern. Oh, I've got a range report. I uh, just recently bought uh, an XDM 40 caliber Springfield Armory pistol, and mm-hmm. I just love it. It's got manageable recoil, and it's just a really well put together gun. And I was a little leery about getting a composite gun because the mm-hmm previous one I had got was uh, one of those Judge pistols that shoots 45 caliber long Colt or 410, oh, right. and it was really not user-friendly at all. It just beat up your hand no matter how you tried to hold it. Mm-hmm. So, so did I'm you get really the, did happy you get, with the Springfield Armory 40 caliber, though. That's a nice pistol. Did you get the full size or the compact version? I got the full size. Yeah, that's a sweet shooting gun. And, you know, I like the XDMs a lot. I liked the XDs, but when the XDMs came out, they really slicked them up. They made the grip a little bit easier to get around for my little short-fingered hands. Uh, and I, they have good triggers, and I I like them. I'm, you will often, and I carry a number of different guns, but you will often find me carrying an XDM uh, compact, you know, the 3.8 compact in 9 millimeter. So let me ask you, why did you choose the forty? Uh, it, it was uh, it was offered to me. I, I ended up trading for it. I guess I oh, should have said instead of buying okay. it. And I was a little uneasy about that because I don't have any other forty calibers, and I really didn't want to have you know another caliber of ammunition to stock up on, but. Uh, I, I'm, I'm really happy with it. What would you suggest if I were to upgrade the sights? Kind of depends on which way you want to go. Do you want uh, like a real visible front sight? The excess sights has a real good visible front sight. If you want something that is, um, I'm kind of gravitating toward, if I'm not going to go with an excess sight, I go to the fiber optic sights, something like a True Glow. Metrolite, uh, I think I have the, whoever has the uh, the fiber optic front sight, I just find that those pop for me. And as as our eyes get older, we need a little bit more light. We need brighter sights. Exactly. Oh, I'm, Ameriglow. I'm in that age group. Yeah. All right. Um, Michael says Ameriglow also has some nice ones, too. So, uh, But I would take a look at some fiber optic sights. Uh, would you put those on yourself, or would you have your local gunsmith do that for you? I think I'll have a gunsmith put them on. Yeah. Well, you could send it to me, and I would butcher them, and then you could have the gunsmith do it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, just one step I want to avoid. So. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We'll take out the middleman. Just take it straight to the gunsmith. <laughs> Let's appreciate the call, sir. Oh, by the way, yeah, that 10 millimeter project, I think it's going to happen. I am so excited. More details to come. 866-TALK-GUN.
One machine, one operator. Each machine is run by a single pair of hands. Hands that spend all day, every day, learning the machine inside and out. We don't believe in quotas. The point is crafting faultless ammunition, no matter how long that takes. It's not quick or easy. Being the best never is. Black Hills Ammunition. It started with our hands. Tired of paying for one concealed carry holster after another that's flimsy, hard to hide, or just plain uncomfortable? Alien Gear holsters feature a super stealthy and ultra comfortable design. Our professional quality holsters are backed by an ironclad triple guarantee, including a free 30-day test drive, free shell traits for life, and a forever warranty. Starting at just $29.88, you won't find a better quality or better priced holster on the planet. Any planet. Go to aliengearholsters.com to get yours now. In the war on terror, fighting crime in the streets, in competition and homes around the world, one name in firearms stands out, Sig Sauer. Our pistols and rifles are renowned for their unfailing performance. This same commitment to excellence can be found in our line of SIGTAC accessories and the training offered by the Sig Sauer Academy. For unmatched quality, reliability, and innovation when it counts, choose Sig Sauer. Visit SigSauer.com today. Successful hunters know big bucks move early and late, often when it's too dark for common scopes. When that monster steps out, you might see him through the scope, but the crosshairs disappear. All that work and you can't take the shot. But with the Trigicon AccuPoint scope, you'll get the shot. Its bright aiming point glows in daylight or darkness. No batteries needed. AccuPoint scopes are water-resistant and nitrogen-filled, feature multi-layer coated lenses for the brightest image, and you can adjust brightness of the aiming point to match the conditions. Adding 10 or 15 minutes to each end of the day can double the magic moments when the trophies move. You can't hit the target if you can't see the sights. Trigicon AccuPoint scopes. Check out the different models at Trigicon.com or call 1-800-338-0563. Brilliant aiming solutions from Trigicon. Wouldn't it be cool if you could use your AR magazines in a bolt-action rifle? Now you can with Mossberg's MVP Rifles. The patent-pending design is a first for bolt-action rifles. Choose from 556 and 223 to 204 Ruger, 300 AAC Blackout, and 308. Varmint, Predator, Patrol, and MVP Flex System models. Adjustable trigger too. AR mags in a bolt rifle. The Mossberg MVP. See more at Mossberg.com. There's never a reason to be without your gun talk. You can even listen on YouTube. Just search for Gun Talk Radio Show or YouTube.com slash Gun Talk TV. Now, more gun talk with Tom Gresham. I'm so glad you could be here. I just love talking about guns with my friends. We get to yak about this and that. So if there's something on your mind, give us a holler, 866-TALK-GUN. Let's see here. Uh, John is in San Antonio, line three. John, what you got? Well, I found myself uh, at a gun show a few weeks ago with a friend of mine that I had taken out for the first time pistol shooting, and he was trying to figure out what kind of gun he was going to get. He was a little bit torn between the uh, Smith & Wesson M&P 9, and then he picked up the uh, Walter PPQ M2. He said, boy, mm-hmm. I really like this gun, but he never really pulled the trigger on it. And since I had just finished getting my uh, NRA pistol instructor certification and my birthday was the day before i said i'm gonna pull the trigger on that one and pick it up happy birthday so, to me yeah that's right exactly <laughs> so so we directly went to the range and we shot him and uh boy i tell you that's a really nice gun the ergonomics is fantastic and that trigger is the best trigger on a striker fire and i've shot a lot of different striker fire pistols the resets you know real real crisp and uh short and uh, it's an accurate mm-hmm. pistol. It comes with two 15-round magazines, but you can get 17-rounders for it, too. So it's a really, really uh, nice gun. It's interesting. You started off with the feature that struck me the most about this gun when you said ergonomics. When you pick it up in your hand, you, there's just something special happens, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, my friend, 
he was like, wow, this feels really good. So, Mm -hmm. and when I picked it up, I said, wow, you're right. I've been hearing about how good it was and how nice the trigger was. And when I was able to, you know, try fire it and, and, uh, and then shoot it, it's a dream. So it's really, it's going to probably become my carry gun at some right. point in time once I get the holster and all that kind of stuff. Also, sure. I'll see you at well, uh, GRPC on, on uh, this weekend, too. I'll be there. Really? Now, have you been to GRPC before? Yep, I met you coming off the stage uh, last year. It was my first one. Okay, I remember that. Uh, okay, people hear me talking about it since that was your first one. Just how fabulous is GRPC? Well, it it really uh, opened my eyes because now I'm on one of the panels, believe it or not. I've become very active. Uh, I'm, what I'm trying to do, I'm a physician, and I'm trying to get concealed carry permission in our hospital. Uh, so you'll be hearing about that. I'll be talking about 4.30. I'll be on a panel with Masada, you, and uh, Chris Bird. So uh, we'll, we'll get a chance to chat, I hope. That is fabulous. Well, we will absolutely chat there. We're talking about the Gun Rights Policy Conference. If you tuned in late, that's going to be this coming weekend in Chicago. It is free to attend. You can, uh, all you got to do is just sign up and you're there. Go to the Second Amendment Foundation's website, saf.org, and you can sign up there. You'll click on the Gun Rights Policy Conference, GRPC. John, I will see you there. I'm looking forward to it, my friend. All right. I'll be, I'll be there uh, looking forward to it. All right, take care. Appreciate the range report. Let's see, Jerry's on line two out of Washington State. Jerry, what you looking for here? What you find? Afternoon, Tom. Oh, hey, I was at a garage sale here, I don't know, about six months or so ago, and the guy had three boxes, uh, uh, 6.5-millimeter man liquor shown our Remington UMC clean bore for the uh, model 1903. I just okay. got him for some trade trading stock at a show. I don't have a, a rifle like that. But mm-hmm. in one of the boxes are some rounds that are still jacketed with a soft point. And they are still jacketed because I can pick them up with a magnet uh, like uh, mm-hmm. the super glue. Right. And the head, the head stamps on the rest of them, they're all 6.5 and they're uh, uh, Remington. The ones mm-hmm. that are still jacketed, soft point, uh, head stamp is S. BP, SBP, uh, it says Man Liquor Show on our MSCH. One of them is, some of them are 6.5 millimeter and some of them are 6.5 by 54, 6.7 and 6.5 by 54. Hmm. You find a bloody thing about them anywhere. Uh, yeah, what you need to do is get yourself a copy of the fabulous book, Cartridges of the World, which we laughingly call Cartridges of the World Unite. Which, you know, because we're all gun geeks around here. But you will, if you're into cartridges and guns at all, you'll find yourself flipping through this thing all the time. Uh, and I don't, unfortunately, I don't have a copy of it right here with me, or I would look it up for you. So I can't tell you exactly what you have. And that's not really my, in my wheelhouse of the things I remember right off the top. I always have to look it up. But honestly, I will do you a favor and do yourself a favor. Go grab a copy of Cartridges of the World. It is a wonderful book. It's a uh, just keep flipping through. You learn all sorts of stuff. So that's that would be my go to place of finding out information. Look, I appreciate the call, Jerry. Let's see what time. How much time we got here, guys? Okay, we got one minute. Um, let's tell it. Glenn, don't go anywhere. Rodney, don't go anywhere. I will shortchange you if I bring you in right now, and that's not fair. So we're going to have Glenn and Rodney. We do have time for you to come in if you'd like to join us. Eight six six Talk Gun. We'll get you in here. Also, don't forget. We do the after show, after the show, where it's kind of a free-for-all, and yeah, it's kind of a fun deal. Completely different uh, take on things, different vibe from what you get here. And you can download that through uh, iTunes. You can go to our website, guntalk.com. You can uh, click on the listen button and find it that way. A lot of different ways to get that. And of course, you also have a lot of ways to listen to Gun Talk. Through Stitcher, iHeartRadio app, our, our Gun Talk app. It's available for the iPhone and the Android. Some people say, I can't find it on the Android store. No, no, no. Go to Amazon to get your Android version of the Gun Talk app. 866-TALK-GUN. That'll get you in. Call me right now. Join the NRA via Tom Gresham's Gun Talk website and receive $10 off the regular membership price. Log on to guntalk.com for details. You're listening to Tom Gresham's Gun Talk. Gun 
Just because we're wrapping up on the air doesn't mean we're done talking about guns. Stick around for the after show. It's our podcast only version designed to include all the stuff we simply couldn't fit into a regular show. Call in now at one Tom Talk Gun. Now back to Tom. All right, back with you. We got, uh, let's see, Glenn, Rodney, Roger lined up. Don't go anywhere, guys. We're going to get to you. We also have room for you. You can call in now. And if we don't get you on the regular show, we'll just hold you over and we'll. Then you get to be a part of the wild and crazy after show. So I don't care what you want to talk about. You definitely want to call in now and be a part of that. 866 Talk Gun. Glenn, Eastern Maryland on line one. Hey, Glenn, what in the world did you buy? I got very lucky, Tom. I, I, I was able to purchase a 40 year old. Uh, 1100, 410, and 28 gauge. Uh, original paperwork, the receipts, everything from 1974. And they were both were unfired. Now this is a probably a skeet set, huh? Uh, both barrels were modified. Okay, all right. Which so, is now, which is still good. You just got to aim better, you know. <laughs> there, there you go. So they were unfired, and then what'd you do? You ran out and shot one of them, didn't you? I, I did. I, I couldn't help myself with the 410. <laughs> and it is a sweet shooting gun. I just, I just lightly oiled it, wiped it down, took it out, um, and shot it. Shot great. Flawless. It was perfect. And I absolutely love it. Obviously, you were not buying these as collectors or investments. You were buying these as shooters. Well, it's, it's, it's a funny thing you say that. The, the original owner bought them as investment guns. And I, I, the receipts I have, I think they were in the low 200s, both of them. Mm-hmm. Like eleven dollars tax. It was. They came from Kentucky. They were. They were bought in Kentucky back in seventy four, and mm-hmm. they found their way to Maryland somehow. And, and uh, I was very lucky. There was also a sixteen gauge, a twenty gauge, and a twelve gauge, but I couldn't afford them after I bought these two. So those those also found good homes here in Maryland. So that it's great. So see, that's a complete skeet set. Four ten, twenty eight, uh, twenty. Then of course the sixteen makes it strange. But some people did shoot those in skeet, and then twelve. Uh, but those are wonderful uh, shotguns, and I have uh, actually have a 410 and 28 a Remington 1100, weirdly enough. So I know exactly what you have there, and just enjoy, just en- shoot the heck out of them, enjoy them, and have a ball. Thank you, Glenn. I appreciate that. Let me get down to Rodney. Uh, he's in Omaha, Nebraska, on line four. Hey, Rodney, what are you looking for? Hi, I was looking to purchase maybe one or or two rifles. Um, for doing both a little bit of long distance, a um, little long distance um, shooting, and some um, long distance hunting here in Nebraska. I had a couple friends tell me to look at the Savage. I think it's the Model 10, but that's a 14 pound rifle when you put the optics on it. How far is long range? How far are you wanting to shoot? Uh, the range right now, uh, the longest I have is 600 yards, but I've, I've shot out in western Nebraska about to 800. Okay. And I was looking at the the Remington Long Range hunt, Hunter, the it's a 700 mm-hmm. SPS, and then also the Ruger Target Varmint or whatever it is, mm-hmm. um, model 77 and 65 um, um, Creedmoor. Do you think either one of those rifles are capable of maybe half inch groups at 100? Uh, probably so. I, I'll tell you when there's one other to take a look at. You save a lot of money. Look at the. Uh, the new Ruger American rifle and 6.5 Creedmoor. I mean, they're selling for like 300, 350 bucks. Uh, I've seen half inch groups out of them at 100 yards. And now, now you're talking about a real serious, nice, long range rig. And now you can go drop a couple of grand onto a scope if you want to. And you got a great rig and you save some money on the front end. And I don't think you're giving up anything on accuracy on the rifle. Listen, I appreciate it. You'll find something you like. The main thing is find the one you like and then buy the one you like. Don't let anybody talk you out of it. All right, now's your chance. Call us right now. 866-TALK-GUN. We'll get you into the after show. In the meantime, do a little shooting. Do a little hunting. Buy a gun. Share the love. Get some training. And talk some other people into getting some training. And most of all, let's be safe out there. 